Most of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this vicious cycle of managing the basal plegia, the hyperperfusion, the, uh, the resusc resuscitation you need while trying to balance uh, potential RV uh, overload and dysfunction. The bleeding contributes to that, and the RV dysfunction obviously contributes to further uh, hyperperfusion. The way I see this is, is the probe helps us kind of break this cycle in terms of if we have a good real-time assessment of the RV, then we can push all these other things that we need to get this patient through with less worry of the RV because it's often guesswork in terms of how much you can do without um, hurting the RV. So this takes the guesswork out. Very easy to use with minimal experience. Um, I had no formal training or didact or introduction to this. Basically, I just saw a couple of people use it and they got my hands wet in terms of just playing with it and within one or two tries it seemed it was very intuitive and I was uh, we're able to do it on our own without, without having to call in an echocardiographer or a cardiac anesthesiologist. Um, then it will set up, so like in that case where uh, we, in the patient who ended up with the R bed, uh, we were able to get that probe in within minutes without having to uh, get a, T, uh, a stand formal TE or TTE in a SWAN. Uh, continuous monitoring for hours or days was always very invaluable that you can't get in any, any other way. Catching this early on will avoid problems uh, longer term with also potential cost savings. Um, and really we see this as an adjunct um, to other tools. And in, in a practical sense, it makes a lot more sense um, in terms of getting things done faster and with the limited resources that you may have. So our first impressions are, are, are very good. And again, we've only been using this for a few months, but it's starting to become a part of our our uh, regular armamentarium of uh, things that we can do uh, to help maximize the uh, treatment of our patients.